Hello there, guys. Welcome to another Train Sim World 4 video. It's been a hot, hot chonker of a minute since I've played any Train Sim World 4. In fact, I've had it uninstalled for quite some time. But recently, today, the 18th of April, 2024, Deftale Games released the Zimmeringbahn, which is in Austria, of course. And one of my favorite routes from the Train Sim Classic days, which Dovetail Games also spearheaded essentially, uh, was the Zimmering Bond. So the same route they made for Train Sim Classic, which I enjoyed a lot, uh, quite a bit, they decided to make uh, in this Train Sim World 4, of course, which we're going to look at today. So it's going to be about 68 kilometers uh, in length, which is about 40 miles, some odd, and it's not going to be an exact uh, tit for tat um, as far as the train some classic version so the train some classic uh, I think went from Merzeschlag to Glockenich whereas this route goes from Merzeschlag to uh, Vienna Neustadt so it's a lot longer there's kind of a long straight uh, high-speed portion on the eastern side of the route you're going to get the UBB 1116 Taurus uh, BMZ coach, which we're currently sitting in, the Havens uh, SGG MRSS and Shims uh, wagons for freight services, uh, and you'll also have the OBB 4024 EMU. So that is not new. Uh, we did have that in the route that came out with um, Train Sim World 4, which was like a cross-border route between Austria and Germany. Uh, that came with that, but you do not need that, even though most of you will already have it if you have Train Sim World 4. Um, that will come with this route as well, so it's a, a little bit of, you know, a regional train, um, you know, just to kind of spice up the timetable a bit, I guess. You're going to get five scenarios, uh, a timetable, naturally, and this is going to take roughly about six and a half gigabytes. So it's, uh, it's very chonk. Now, the price is sadly going to be roughly the same. It's going to be about $39.99 US. I got $5 off, 10% thereabouts, uh, for pre-ordering it. Like I said, I've always been into the Zimmering Bond. Uh, it had a lot to offer in Train Some Classic as far as different types of rolling stock you could use, and it was definitely one of Dovetail Games' better-looking routes. Uh, some of the preview photos I saw of this for Train Some World 4 I thought it looked fairly decent as well, so what the hell, here we are now. This is the first thing I've touched, uh, geez, since about, I think Train Sim World 4 came out many, many, many months ago. Anyway, we're going to have uh, an updated cab from the 182, which is basically the Taurus, the 1116, um, or 1116, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that's been updated. Um, it is set in 2024, so this is supposed to be very current or present today. Um, Let's see, I think there's some new sounds on the Taurus, of course, so I'm just kind of glossing over some things, which we'll go into in depth a bit later. Um, like I said, same as Zimmering Bond and Transom Classic, just a bit longer. Uh, I think there's about 17 stations. Uh, the 1116, so the Taurus that's leading this train we're currently on, that is going to layer into Salzburg and Vorarlberg. I think it currently layers into Salzburg if you have that before Alberg. I think they're going to add that. I do not have Salzburg. Uh, I need to pick that up, but I do have Vorlberg, of course. Um, sadly, there is no Taurus branding. I know that much. We'll take a look at that. Um, and I think it's just second class coaches. So currently, we're sat in a second class BMZ coach. Uh, Dovetail Games said that they didn't have the time, for whatever reason, to model a bistro car or a first class coach, which most of these trains would have been on um, but anyway what's kind of funny is some of the options they went with for this route is this train in general so this is sort of like an inner city train whereas inner city and euro city they you know they obviously are what they sound like euro city goes between different countries neighboring countries to austria in between you know large cities and the intercity is mainly within uh austria if i'm not mistaken but um we didn't get a night jet there i mean what runs on this route in real life present day and has for many many years now is several night jet services i mean that's like the number one train that uh passes to and fro over the pass if you will there's also quite a bit of freight uh and then of course you've got some regional trains which i would very much like to see some you know some older locomotives um you know train cars and things like that but uh 
you know, I'm thinking 1144s, rail jets, uh, 5022 city jets, uh, the Vesels. Um, you know, I could go on and on. There's a lot of stuff that we could see which would be nice, but it's just kind of a, dare I say, bland offering as of right now. So as I typically like to do with a lot of these uh, first look type videos for train sim content is I'll generally go around the route, go over a bit of history, things like that. And then of course we'll get into the actual nitty gritty, the rolling stock, the locomotive, things like that. But the Zimmering Bahn, which is where this is based, is nestled in the Styrian region of Austria, which also borders on Lower Austria, which are of course states within the country of Austria. Now it was built, the Zimmering Bahn, the past, between 1848 and 1854, spearheaded by Karl, I'm probably gonna mess this up, Ritter von Ge Gegens, something like that. Anyway, yeah, big engineer guy, came up with this crazy plan. And what's neat about the route, and quite historic, is it's the first high mountain pass, standard gauge, what's well, known as standard gauge, railway on earth, the very first one. Um, now, this was also the first rail line in the world to be declared a UNESCO Heritage World Site, which is pretty neat in itself. I think that dates to about 1998. Uh, and it, of course, is operated by the Sudbahn, or Southern Railway, uh, via the Austrian Federal Railway, which is UBB. Um, it was built with 20,000 some odd workers. Uh, I think it's got about 14 tunnels, 16 viaducts, AKA bridges, um, and then over 100 just regular bridges, not, you know, fancy viaduct type bridges. Um, but most of the infrastructure uh, building and station wise were built using backfill from some of the tunnels. So a lot of the older stations that you'll see along the line were actually backfill from some of the tunnels to kind of keep it, you know, looking uh, a bit more uniform and, and nice and, and just clean, I guess you could say. The grades on the pass are between, geez, I want to say about two and two and a half um what else I'm, so so the direction we're going here i'll go ahead and pop the map open actually there we go this is the direction we're traveling now so we're headed east this is actually the steeper quicker portion of the pass uh headed eastbound if you're headed westbound um it's a little bit more gradual uh i believe the pass kind of ends right about here so again, they tried to keep this within the confines of modern day, uh, the year 2024. Uh, you know, what we have is okay, I guess, that came with the route, but common trains used today are gonna be the Siemens ES64U2, which is the UBB or the Austrian Federal Railway, call it the 1116. Um, that's essentially the train that, that's, or the locomotive that's pulling this train currently. Uh, the UBB 1142, the 1144, uh, 4024s, 4744s, and probably several other trains I'm not currently coming to mind. Uh, so in the spring of about 2012, work began on a tunnel to lessen the trip time, bypassing 41 kilometers of the pass. Now, it was slated for completion, I think, initially in about 2030, and it's going to cost over 4 billion euros. So what's neat in that is they actually included that within the game as well. So you can actually see the new part of the line. This is where the tunnel is going to begin. And I believe it finishes here underneath the mountains um, right about there. And so they kind of built the line in the game as it's under construction, which is kind of neat. Thankfully, the line itself in the game isn't under the damn mountains because that wouldn't be very fun i guess but we're still in a, a very lengthy of our first tunnel i think the next stop is uh simmering uh but the peak of the pass itself is roughly 3,000 feet above sea level all righty then let's go ahead and hop around the map and see what's going on so the first town that we're currently going to look around in is mertzschlag uh which is in the western um part of the pass uh which ends here currently where we're at so this is the far west there's the pass itself and then this is vienna neustadt with uh quite a few fairly large marshalling yards if i might add uh but Berchtesgaden is within the styrian region of course like most of the route eastern austria well i think it's considered northeastern austria 
and is a very popular tourist town for nearby skiing and hiking for some of the very large uh, mountains off to the west. Uh, now the town houses a railway museum which I believe is in the game here so it's sat right over here sadly there is no rolling stock um, within but it it looks fairly decent uh, it doesn't look totally generic uh, you know and I'm just going along with the stone kind of texture uh, building face if you will so that looks okay you got a bit of a little observation tower there as well and of course the turntable uh, this place houses some very very cool uh, Austrian locomotives and beyond I think a little bit more than Austria but uh, some very nice electric uh, locomotives and things like that uh, what else is going on here well it's obviously the western terminus of the mountain pass itself um, hmm this was a pretty big railroad town back in the day as you know that shop that we just took a look at back there was a, a full-on working shop for uh, the Federal Railways uh, that went to and from the pass um, but it generally looks okay one of the first things you'll notice uh, popping this map open if you do happen to purchase it is the scenery it doesn't look half bad it's got the updated time of day of course as it should with all the new routes within train sim world uh, you do have some uh, UVB station um, you know signage and things like that which is nice instead of it being completely left out I think dovetail uh, kind of works uh, hand in hand with OBB on some of the branding so they do have access to some things if I am not mistaken but uh, by and large the stations themselves the few that I've seen anyway look generally okay um, you know but again it, it one of the reasons I've uninstalled train some world 4 is just everything kind of starts to look samey it you know it's supposed to be in a different country and, and time and things like that but it still all looks kind of samey uh after a while but uh this is the town itself the there's a river back here i can't remember the name of it presently it's one of the viaducts here or bridges um but as far as like the safety or the sound barriers on the sides those are quite present in uh in austria you do see those quite a bit and they look pretty nice but one of the big glaring issues i'm seeing right off the bat is the ballast or the uh the track fill on the ground it just looks a bit dark it looks kind of purpley whereas i i'm fairly certain it's more of just a lighter uh or kind of a, a medium darkness granite so just like a slate uh gray uh, not whatever this is supposed to be so um you know otherwise other than that the mountainsides and the hillsides look okay uh now this is known as like the something about the the, the green heart of austria i have to forget how they exactly put it but it's it's very luscious some of the largest forests in austria um are here in styria and lower austria in this region anyway general region um and you know some of it does look okay you can see where they put some 3d trees down but they've also got to keep those ancient ancient consoles in mind which i think a lot of us are being held back by sadly uh by you know making things a little sparse you can see a lot of 2d trees in the background which i'm totally fine with that but i think there needs to be a hell of a lot more of them uh and Predominantly, this region has, uh, I don't know the name of the tree itself, but it's its definitely more of a, a, a cone-shaped pine tree. You know, they do have oak and things like that. They have a lot of fern. Uh, you'll see in summertime, uh, it's a very, very lush uh, region. And there's some parts that just do not kind of seem like they, they give that effect. I don't know. I mean, it looks... <laughs> Like I said, everything with the trains of World 4 just kind of starts to look samey. Okay, here's some here's some better looking ballast. Okay, so this is actually more natural to what you would actually see in this region. Uh, although this is kind of bluish. So it's just odd that it's like there's this distinct line between the, the ballast. And you'll still have the ever-present kind of patterning and a lot of the ballast, which sucks within trains and World 4 routes. Um... I know there's, uh, you know, just trains, for example, that did the uh, what is it, Blackpool branches. I do not have that. I still not, uh, still did not purchase that yet. 
Uh, I know that got some really good feedback. So not everything is the same in Train Sim World 4, um, but alas, a, a lot of your, you know, dovetail game stuff is like, it's just the same thing, you know, mixed up over and over again with, with different rolling stock and, you know, different uh, overhead line equipment if it's a European country or, or in the UK and things like that and of course the buildings they have like a, a German style building suite that they use for you know regions like this in Germany and it's just never really anything new it seems like they never really take the time to make any new kind of foliage or little assets or things like that what they have been wasting time and effort on is these people these largely pointless and ridiculous looking people like this person has a backpack you'll see some holding phones i know they touted that recently with the release of the root or an update or something like that i don't give a shit about stuff like that i'm sure many people do not either you're not here <laughs> for 3d people standing on the platforms you're here for the trains right i mean it's train sim world so it says in the name so i think that's one of the things that they could have left out maybe directed their focus and attention elsewhere instead of trying to do uh, stupid things like that that are just a bit pointless in in my honest and very blunt opinion but anyway this is the main line over here that runs off starts heading east this is the new track i guess that's why they went with the different color ballast although Largely the ballast all over the route is more like this color. Just a bit darker and less blue. Blue. Uh, but yeah, this looks pretty bad in the in the patterning. It's always ever present in Train Some World 4 stuff as well, sadly. Because once you see the pattern, you just can't unsee it. I mean, it's just everywhere. But they did build it with the uh, construction of the tunnel, which you can see here. Uh, you can kind of see down in there with that crazy death spike hanging there. You'll see some weird things in the uh, geography and the land, which I've noticed. I'll try and point out here uh, briefly. Uh, but it's a construction zone. you got a big uh, crane there and a couple of diggers and tractors and pipes and things like that. A little substation. Um, and it basically just goes right under the ground, digging right under all these uh, mountains, so to speak um all the way across to about the middle of this entire route but yes this does not look good man this distinct line that's not how ballast is dumped <laughs> uh it just looks ridiculous you'd think things like that um would get picked up but some of the uh, track infrastructure itself looks okay and looks you know present and accounted for uh the track switch there uh the overhead line i think I don't know if these um, posts are new. I know a lot of the the German stuff are they're generally metal, if I'm not mistaken, and kind of rounded. This is more of like a square. Uh, some of the stuff looks a little bit different, but they could have used it on the Vorarlberg uh, route as well. Got a little bit where you can pass up under there. Nice little footbridge going over this river. Uh, this looks okay. This uh, this little body of water here generally looks all right, uh, to be honest. You're not really going to be seeing much of that, though, so it is what it is. Uh, and you will see a lot of these kind of cliff faces like this, which uh, do look nice, if I'm honest. You can see a, a bit of, like, um, fungus and whatnot kind of growing on the side. Uh, a lot of this region is fairly moist and damp, so you would kind of see stuff like that in ferns. I very much would have liked to see just a lot more dense foliage and ferns and, and weeds and vines and, and things like that. Uh, from the tiny bit that I've seen so far, I haven't really seen anything like that. Uh, you'll see you know, a lot of these same old reused buildings from a lot of the other German routes and things like that. It's just, you know, it's the fifth time so far saying it, but everything within Train Sim World 4 just looks kind of samey. They have a suite of assets that they use and they just kind of mix them up. And, and change the ingredients, you know, every now and then, and then come out with a new route. And that got old. I mean, that got old with Trains in World 1. Uh, and then we're on to number 4 here. So anyway, we'll move on down the line. Check out a couple of the, um, the other stations. 
uh, notable landmarks, things like that. And then, of course, we'll get to the train itself and operate it and uh, listen to that new sound set. Here's the next station after Merchischlag, which is Spital am um, Zimmering, uh, which is 4024, is sat at. Uh, largely, if, if you get this route and you're going to want to play it, uh, you're going to want to choose the 4024 because that's pretty much going to be an all-stopper. A lot of the inner city type trains that are being spearheaded by the Taurus, or led by the Taurus anyway, are going to be two stops. I mean, you're going to start in uh, Merchischlag or Vienna Neustadt, and then you're going to stop in... Maybe Gloggenitz and Simmering, and then that's it. So there are quite a few stations on this route, but uh, you're going to want to operate that thing right there. Sadly, if you do, yes, that's right. If you just heard the sounds, they still suck. They're just straight from the Talent 2, um, which, again, Dovetail Games, a lot of recycled things over and over again, uh, has gotten quite crusty and stale by now. Uh, I don't know if we'll see any update in sounds of that. At least they did update the Taurus sounds. We will get to those a bit later. Uh, but anywho, you do see quite a bit of grass present. Again, a lot of it is just the same old reused stuff. Uh, I would like to see some more pine-type trees. I just feel like they're not quite right for the region. Um, you know, I just, I just feel like every German and, and European route in, in Trainsome World looks like this. You know, they... They might throw a new asset down like this this building here the old station house um and that's it but everything else is going to be kind of just <laughs> you know regurgitated um for the most part but uh, this is just a very small little station here you'll see the signage they always use the same incorrect font for whatever reason there's never any um you know effort placed into into putting that up uh, that happens on every single friggin' route, sadly, but it's just uh, kind of middle of the nowhere station. We got a Taurus passing through here. It will not be stopping, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, it's going to keep on going down to Merchislog. And then, oh, look at that. So, see, that's what Dovetail Games employees have been told to start spending time on is making these scary ass looking platform people do things like this could we maybe focus more on the trains themselves or the route itself and not so much these lizard people that would be great just you know food for thought this guy has some sick beats on what not but uh yeah the the surrounding scenery does look good don't get me wrong i did make it a bit cloudy we'll go ahead and zoot them clouds up out of the way uh now it's quite blue and hazy looking but you'll note it's quite sparse and you know this region in real life is not there are very thick dense forests it's it's almost got like a belgian look like parts of belgium um you know with just these dark you know blanketed mountainsides with forest uh you know there's a lot of this area that looks like that and this just doesn't quite hit the spot now i know there are some some parts that have been logged and you got fields uh farming and things like that but they they could have maybe done with two times the uh the the 2d tree assets placed in now of course it doesn't look as shit as the arosa line thank god um yeah, but it is what it is, I guess. Let's go ahead and get some clouds back up here. Add a little flare. And let's go to the next station. We've caught up with the 4024 heading towards Vienna Neustadt. Again, we're at the next station, which is Steinhaus. I'm simmering, although it just says Steinhaus on the signs itself. Uh, just another kind of very unassuming, small, double platform station. Um, yeah, just kind of... Yeah. Now this looks okay. Uh, I like seeing little bits like that place, but to be honest, in, in, in countries like this and places like this, they are quite clean, um, so to speak, versus thinking some other countries, mine, namely the States. <laughs> A lot of your train stations aren't going to be this kind of clean and neat, uh, but it is nice just seeing little organic things just to make a scene uh, just feel more alive um which you know train some world four lacks uh largely
We are now in the quintessentially more beautiful parts of the region in real life and in the game from what I've seen so far. This is the namesake of the route itself, Zimmering. This is the town uh, essentially atop the pass uh, down to the south or to the right. You probably can't see. Well, yeah, you can. These mountains up here are the, they call it the Millennium's Fart overlook and there's three or four ski slopes up there as well so it's a big tourist spot and uh probably hiking in the warmer months like i have it set here uh, i tried to get through the tunnel and this free cam and now it's being really stupid um you know just train some world things please let me get over there okay it is not very cool very cool dovetail love that locked in invisible wall feeling this is the other side of the tunnel anyway this is the eastern side of the tunnel we entered back there of course this is simmering um jesus it's not even gonna let me friggin yeah we're just this is happening right now <laughs> it's it's not gonna let me go anywhere sweet 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 love it love it really enjoy this let me no let me get over there yeah so you can't free cam around sadly so i'm just gonna have to load into simmering so yeah cool all righty we're back in zimmering so to be able to get in here and look around because nothing starts in this town or finishes timetable wise i had to come in on foot and then spawn a locomotive which we have here uh now there there are some freight moves in some of these little towns which is pretty neat you'll see some of the tankers back there um i don't know if anything is going to you know be usable with stuff like that we'll take a look more in depth at the timetable in just a moment here is the tunnel which we we were stuck up there a moment ago which we could not escape uh, but this area looks pretty decent as well again this is one of the more beautiful areas on you know the line in the game of course and uh in real life now over here uh to the left is the giga monument now you could call him a Giga Chad, uh, but the guy, the engineer that built the line, this was a monument built for him that uh, designed the thing essentially. And right here, you may be thinking, okay, there's a weird bit of track there with some very neatly manicured dark ballast, <laughs> which kind of looks ridiculous. Anyway, that is here in real life as well. That is where the 5144 multiple unit sits. What sucks about it in game is you got to play the crap out of this line to unlock it. So it's part of what they call a mastery. So to get the thing to sit here and make this look a bit more appropriate and true to life, you have to play it a ton uh, and then unlock the thing. And then it sits there. Of course, I have not done that because I just bought this today and we're taking a look at it now. I've owned it maybe an hour so far. So yeah, it is not there. But this little area does look pretty good. It looks pretty true to life. This thing is definitely a brand new, um, I wouldn't call it an asset, I guess, because they're not going to reuse this anywhere, really. But uh, it does look good. It does look appropriate, legit. You've got a random bench sitting up here. This is another extra thing that they added. People taking selfies complete with camera click sounds. It's ridiculous. We don't need stuff like that. What's going on with this guy's hair? Like somebody poured acid on his head. He's got a newspaper. What's it say? Sunday train watching. Take a peek in Peak Forest. That may not be new. I don't know. I have not played this in quite, quite some time. Uh, the place is super busy as well. I don't know that it would be this busy. Uh, anyway, but the station looks okay. It looks somewhat uh, apropos to how the area looks in real life. And uh, it's just a neat town. It's kind of a little mountain town. Sit right up atop the pass. I do like the uh, station lighting as well. I think these may be new. I don't recall seeing these lamps before. The bird sound that we just heard, that might be new again. I haven't played Train Some World in a long ass time. I don't know what they've added uh, recently. But what I was saying about a lot of the stonework like this, is a lot of this is the backfill of the stuff they blasted out of the tunnel. So they repurposed them and uh, just gave this area overall a clean look this is uh definitely one of the nicer areas i've seen on the map so far um but let's keep on going 
coming out of the second tunnel on the line uh, just east of Zimmering is the first little viaduct. Now, they all have names, and I don't know them. I think I know the names of two of the bigger ones, but this is a hell of a view, if I might add. Like I said, I think Dovetail Games did, you know, an ass-slapping job of, you know, Simmering Bond and Train Sim Classic, and it, you know, it kind of goes along well here, too. Uh, I still think the color palette is a bit weird. I mean, this is a super lush area. I don't know how many times I can say it. Very, very, very green. Um, some parts just don't don't really give that off, plus the trees. I mean, this place has an absolutely ton, 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 ton of trees, IRL. But uh, these viaducts are all brand new, I believe, uh, which Dovetail themselves noted. Here's the next station. This might be uh, Wolfsburg Google. I think let's find a sign. Yes, it is Wolfsburg Gogol. Uh, again, it looks pretty appropriate. This is uh, this is one of the more kind of authentic stations, I guess you could say. It looks uh, a, a, like there's a bit more to it instead of just your basic ass, you know, small platform like uh, back at uh, Spitalum Simmering or Steinhaus or something like that. It, you know, it just looks um, more ornate, I guess you could say. Fumbling on words here. The building actually looks okay. I do like seeing this. You can see some kind of mold and grime. It's just not, you know, blinding white paint on there. It, you know, it looks old and kind of crusty like that. Looks okay. That almost looks realistic. So, you know, some some things look good. A lot of things don't. That might be a collector's item right there. The Austrian flag on the backpack. You have uh, Agent 47 right here, of course. Some more incorrect fontage. And we got a train! So it looks like 4024s run quite a bit through here, which is nice. I like this kind of walkway leading up the uh, the hillside there. But yeah, it's another good looking area. Let's see if we can continue through this tunnel without it uh, trapping us indefinitely. All right, we passed through the other tunnel uh, just east of Versailles Gogol, and we're heading east of course i think the next very large viaduct is coming up here's another small one here um you know it just looks fairly decent these textures are a bit low res holy hell man hey caramba yeah sometimes those 2d trees don't look that great when i zoom out like that you can really see the light kind of having their way with them and then you zoom in it's all level of detail stuff which is always inherently very low and train some world sadly let's see if we don't die in this tunnel oh i see light thank jesus okay here we go oh, that's a post right in our face now i think this is the adlitz graben viaduct this is one of the larger ones uh, there's a highway that passes underneath it and it does look pretty good it looks pretty good you can kind of see a, a weird gap there uh, you can see some of the overhead line equipment, you know, posts and poles sticking down through there. Just things that definitely could be touched up that were not. Let's get rid of some of these clouds, actually. It's getting a bit dark. There we go. We'll do it like that. There should be another tunnel around the bend. It's just, you know, this is kind of one of those one-trick pony routes, guys. You know, it's a lot of tunnels, a lot of bridges. It is nice scenery, but once you do it once... It's kind of like, what's the point of doing it again? You know, um, uh, looks like another big gap in the terrain, which, uh, that's pretty present in some areas that I kind of dashed around in earlier before recording. I've seen some stuff like that, which is pretty poor craftsmanship. Um, you have one of the big rock faces there, and that's actually the line over there, if I'm not mistaken. It, it might be, I can't remember the name of that cliff face. It's like a, a, a hallmark. And I see a train coming right now. Very cool. Just have a little little taste of those new sounds. Mmm. Not a bit better. We'll, uh, we'll get more. We'll get all up in it um, shortly, presently. We'll, we'll, you know, go over the, the mappage here. Uh, here's the next viaduct. God, what is this one called? Kalterin, I think. Kalterin. Yeah, this is the double. 
the double doozy deal. Yep. So this is the double viaduct. This thing looks very cool. Um, you know, if you Google like anything Zimmering Bond, you're probably going to see this right off the bat. Um, just just a, a cool looking viaduct or, or bridge. And this is, you know, from over there, we could see the line. This is the kind of bare mountaintop or rock face over here. Um, you know, a lot of this does look good, but it's still just just very, very sparse. Again, I know they got to worry about consoles. Uh, hampers a lot of PC players. Um, you know, just just give us options. Give us like tree density options, at least, please. Something, you know, that would help with stuff like this, because it just looks it looks a bit ridiculous. You know, if you filled it in with more trees, the, the kind of lack of shadow uh, in the distance wouldn't be as uh, evident. And it just wouldn't look as piss poor, if I'm honest. Anyway, let's go through the next tunnel. I think those are the only two viaducts I know. I think those are the two uh, bigger ones. There is another station right up here. Here's another kind of double doozy, a little shorty, shouty. And they all kind of do look different. I like the color of this one. You can kind of see these iron spikes or little ornate pieces sticking out the side of the arches there. And, uh, yeah, that's, that looks pretty good. I mean, that's a shot right there, man. That looks nice. Here's some of the, uh, the cliff face in the little baby tunnel. Of course, it's, uh, mostly a river valley. Uh, here we go. Next stop, this is... I feel like it starts with a B. Breitenstein. Yep. Another big one. Big old station house. Uh, which looks okay, honestly. Um, again, it just could could use some some dusting up, just making it look a little bit more organic. I guess that's that'll be the word of the uh, recording today is organic. Got some crossings here. I do not know if they work. I believe they are supposed to work. Um, big old station house, though. A lot of these are repurposed or not used at all. You literally just buy tickets at kiosks. Uh, and things like that. Sadly, as with, you know, a lot of old station houses all over the, the world, not just here. Got some uh, timber cars sitting here. It would be cool to, you know, to do a, some sort of freight run with stuff like this. I remember fondly a lot of uh, trains, some classic, you know, player-made scenarios on routes like this where you would come up and down the line as kind of a freight local uh, stopping and switching out cars and whatnot and that that is entertaining to me you know because the thing with a lot of these trains and passenger trains is they are literally on cruise control i mean the driver is just there just to kind of keep an eye on things if i'm honest so it, it does get quite a bit snooze festy now these old towers here i guess they were kind of like uh what we would call like interlocking towers there are quite a few along the route there are some other buildings right up next to the line as well, which are houses. But these here, I think, I'm going to assume these were like old interlock towers. Uh, if you know, please let me know in the comments below. As usual, I'd love to see all the uh, the things that I possibly missed or 100% got incorrect. Or just, you know, if you have any tips or anything like that, let them rip. Got another tunnel here. This rock face does look very very quite nice you can see some of the uh the boulder landslide protection like the fencing here nice little touch then you've got this little bit here kind of like uh it's little bits of a rosa line that look like this but i will say my dudes the lighting in here looks very choice um you know i'm not crazy about the eye adaptation within train sim world but like this looks okay that could you know you could doctor that up uh, and, and make that look fairly, what the hell? Realistic. Oh, I thought these were like gnomes or fairies or something when I was over here, because they looked super tiny. So I guess it's like a little Easter egg as a hiker that hurt his knee or something. What a punk. Walk it off, bro. Walk it off. All right, let's continue. Uh, so that was Breitenstein. We've got quite a distance to go, I think, until the next um, platform. So I will spare you. But, uh, yeah, the mountain pass doesn't last too long. That's it, pretty much. And it's still kind of just this nice, lush. This is such a freaking beautiful area in real life. Um, and one of my favorite areas in uh, Grand Prix in the Formula One calendar. 
uh, in Styria, the Red Bull Ring, uh, in this very region. But it's freaking gorgeous. Now, these trees right here I like. These are more of like the, the pine tree that would be akin to this area. So if they had just an absolute mess of those everywhere, um, that would be nice. And I just happened to come across this viaduct as well, which is on the way to, uh, I think the next station is Clam Schutfein. Um, but this is a very nice looking uh, aqueduct or bridge as well. And it's a double, or a double, double double, another double doozy. And another one. Here's the next kind of little unassuming plebeian uh, station or platform. This is Clam Schatwein, um, which is just very small little area and very small little modern platform. Not a whole lot uh, going in here, but I will applaud the grass as well. Um, I do like seeing the grass. It's a bit nuclear looking. Uh, but I do like seeing it, especially when it starts encroaching on the tracks themselves, because you can go find plenty of cab ride videos and things like that of this area. And in the warmer months, man, it, uh, it starts encroaching on the rail bed itself quite heavily. So, uh, you know, I would always love to see more vegetation just trying to take over, uh, as you would see in real life in a lot of, you know, regions like this. Here's the next station, which is Eichberg. Kind of, uh, we're almost in like a plateau up here. You can see quite a ways around. Um, and it's a, a, a fairly pretty area as well. But it's just one of the newer, more modern uh, platforms, sadly, where there's just not a whole lot going on. There's just really nothing to write home about, so to speak, uh, with a lot of these like this. But you've got two uh, stopping uh, platform areas and then a pass-through line as well. Some some rail cars sitting on the side here for some sort of fill if you will fill if you will poet didn't know it and here we have another aqueduct see if we can get a good view of it yeah i mean some of this does look really good it, it's kind of uh true to form for the train some classic Variant and I wish I'd have gone back and reinstalled it and played it. It's been probably a few years now You see some uh, some cattle some beeves some future steaks uh, Sit down there grazing on some of this nice Austrian grass We have another train inbound Which should most definitely be a night jet another bridge So like I was saying earlier this side is more of the gradual slope to the route, whereas where we started in Merchislag is the the steeper, uh, more acute side of of the uh, the line, and this is I guess you could say obtuse. Now we're using geometric terms. I don't know why. Next tunnel. The next station should be Kub, I believe. Well, that looks kind of funny. I, was, I didn't know if that was supposed to be snow up there or what, but I guess it's just uh, part of the cloud hanging on the mountain top. Got another little aqueduct slash bridge. The fancy word for bridge. Did I forget a station? Is this this is camp? Yes, this is Coop. Okay. This sketchy individual just standing in there hiding. Uh, yeah, another one of those kind of stations. Not much to it, you know. Now, here is what I believe is the last kind of chonker aqueduct. This is the Schwarzen. Um, it's definitely one of the longer ones. It's kind of hard to get out and look at it because of the way the stupid uh, free cam works in Train Some World. It is quite rage inducing. Uh, you can only get so high, um, you know, because I, I believe it's been mentioned by a, a Dovetail associate one time that they don't want the player to be able to go so high as they can see how bad the extended world looks i mean who cares let us get up in the air a little bit and be able to see stuff better i think this is the last uh very large aqueduct and then i think the next town is pyreback uh right now so we are here in pyreback right now this is a neat little area as well this is definitely one of the areas that looks a bit more hand uh tickled i can't think of a descriptive word to use 
Uh, you can see the aqueduct in the distance. This building here looks very nice. You've got an old uh, graveyard back here complete with flowers. That looks very nice. I like that. Instead of just graves, there's actually flowers and planters and things like that. A little bit of high weed. Maybe need to get out there with the weed whacker. Uh, that looks nice. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, man. Just extra, just extra, you know, instead of the, the, the copy-paste type crap. The old building over here, or depot, if you will, which does look very nice, might I add. Let's double check. Yeah, this is Pyreback right now. Okay. So this is a neat, uh, neat little area. So what is here that makes it neat is the Pyreback uh, Hollenthal Railway, which do not get it mistaken with the one. There's one in Germany. Um... And I think it's got almost the exact same name, but it was an air gauge electric uh, running from Pyrebeck Reichenau along the Semmering to Hirschfang. So it went roughly about three miles and it was opened in 1918 for service of a paper mill. And later they opened it to passengers and general goods. It's now used as like a like a little tourism and, and heritage type deal. But uh, that's the main station. And then this is where the... Uh, the Hulenthal, Pyreback Hulenthal Railway is and a little uh, little depot there. This would have been cool to see uh, fleshed out with quite a few people. I think it only runs, obviously, in the warmer months, so probably post late April or May uh, through, like, October maybe. Uh, this would have been very cool to see, see some people gathered here, uh, maybe some of these little tiny, um, you know, electric, uh, they're not locomotives. I mean, they kind of are. We'll call it like a tram. I don't know what the hell to call it. But anyway, this is where they would be. And it's uh, it's a neat little area. This kind of juts off to the north here. Actually, we're heading east now. Or no, we're not. That The compass is completely useless. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, that heads north uh, up, the, uh, up the side of the hill there. So it's a neat little area. Um, so I guess they kind of had to, you know, touch up uh, Pyreback right now a bit because of that. You will see this this piece of uh, <laughs> catenary pole just kind of floating in midair. Just little things like that that were just completely missed, which suck. Um, there is quite a bit of that. I, I saw some down in, uh, in uh, blah, 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 blah. Vienna Noise that as well. Um, but yeah, this this general area looks okay. It's, it starts flattening out a bit more and more. It's less sharp and steep. And it's just going to turn into kind of like wide open uh, the further east we get here. Here's the next stop along the line heading east towards Vienna Neustadt, which is, I'm probably going to mess the name up, Schlugmühl, I think, which has got the old station house here. You can tell the uh, the land is getting a bit more flat. Uh, there are still some ever-present hills in the distance, uh, but it will flatten out quite a bit. Definitely a newer station again. Um... You know, which is indicative by the platforms and just kind of unassumingness. Got a couple of little greenhouses over here. Little farm getting going. Got another 4024 set headed westbound. Um, and my dog sounding like he's barfing under my desk. I don't know if you guys caught that or not. Uh, and you will see a river down here. So they tried to add like some rocks to kind of spice it up and make it look less bland as uh, that side kind of does. Um, so not sure what's going on with that, but, uh, it's there and we looked at it. Um, let's see, is this, oh, this is the other side of the tunnel, guys. Yeah, so this is the other side of the tunnel. This is where the tunnel will come out. Um, which is kind of, so Glogganish should be right behind us here. So yeah, this is where the other side of the tunnel is. So you can see we are currently here and then it began uh hither so this is the end of the tunnel um i was hoping i haven't seen this yet so i was hoping there'd be a bit more of a kind of scene going on here it just looks very very bare um currently i think i remember this uh this kind of wall planter wall i think this was used in castle Würzburg, i believe in trains in world three it does look good though i do like it the uh the vines and ferns and weeds hanging off the side there uh, let's get down here. Yeah, this has got to be clogging it. Oh, it got very dark all of a sudden. 
So uh, Glockenitz is kind of at the base of the line itself. Um, two of the highest peaks in the area or in Lower Austria are in the distance. You can't, you kind of see one there. Um, another little fun fact about Glockenitz. This was home to two of Austria's uh, federal presidents. Yeah, it's a little kind of unassuming middle of nowhere town right here two presidents and um it was a uh, a medieval monastery um back in its heyday so i think it kind of grew from there i don't believe you can really see any of it uh up here sadly here are the platforms again just kind of not a whole heck of a lot going on um that does look pretty custom that kind of slanted glass which is kind of cool um there's a building over here. Don't see anything going on there, but I did load in on uh, on foot, so I don't know. We'll take a look at that. Banoff. So that's on there. You do have a clock as well. And so from here, this is kind of where it just is like, that was my dog. Deepest apologies. <laughs> this is kind of where the route just kind of flattens out and turns into a racetrack, if you will. So we'll go ahead and zoom on down there. And then I promise we'll get to the uh, rolling stock and take a look at that because I'm eager to see what that new Taurus sound is all about. Just like to stop and appreciate this little area here. So, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people are all about mountain passes and mountain railways and mountains and scenery and blah, blah, blah. But they don't always look the best in train sim or especially train sim world. Uh, but this right here, these these fields, these farms look pretty darn nice. And if, if you're at about uh, head level as an engineer, you know, it's just a nice wide open kind of field. I feel like uh, the Dresden routes did that very, very well. So, um, you know, stuff like that looks equally good. I know, you know, with it being Simmering Bond, you're thinking, oh, wow, it's just the mountain pass. But I mean, this this area here, the kind of eastern third of the route is just this wide open, you know, bit of we'll just say hall assness and uh some very large fields so uh this this kind of takes on a totally different look to the rest of the route obviously through the uh, mountain passes there which is very welcomed i mean this looks pretty good these are bare down in here sadly but again to be fair if you're going to be at, at head level in the uh, engineer's position about yay uh yeah, you can still see it yeah so Anyway, just wanted to point that out. Alrighty then, guys. We kind of just zooped on down to Vienna Neustadt, which very much loosely... <laughs> kind of don't make sense. Very much and loosely. Uh, translates to New Town in the Land of Vienna. So that's uh, Vienna Neustadt, which is here. And it's a pretty big area. This is a pretty big burb. And it's about... What is it? Like 40 kilometers from Vienna itself, which would be up this way, which you can't tell where I'm going, obviously. But it would be... Uh, basically north of the route itself. Let's go ahead and back out of there because you can't see anything. And uh, the area is somewhat historic like Vienna itself. It got its footing via the 12th century in the Ottokar dynasty and then changed hands several times, uh, different, you know, royal families and, and things like that um, over the centuries. But it's uh, a pretty good sized area, definitely the busiest area. It's going to be uh, on this route. You will see a lot of freight sitting around here, which I do, 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 do very much like. You'll see this parking garage over here, which is, um, you know, it's a parking garage, and it looks like that in real life. Uh, a lot of platforms. Uh, the town itself overall looks good. I did set it in October as well. It is now October fished, and it looks pretty good. So... You know, it's not over the top with some of the coloring. Like now, some of the coloring and, and some of the autumnal months within Train Sim World look absolute dog ass. Uh, this does not. This looks okay. It's it's kind of muted. Uh, I'd like to see this on every route. You know, it's just it's just just enough. You know, where it's not just over the top like uh, clown hair, for example, which is how freaking bright and vibrant it is because stuff does not look like that. Uh, but anyway, it's a pretty good sized station. I don't remember how many platforms it has. I want to say like six at least, maybe seven. Uh, so the station over here, I think the bus station is adjoining as well. Somewhere over here, if I'm not mistaken. You'll see a lot of freight. Got a little footbridge and regular auto bridge going over. Um, but the station looks pretty good. I do like the uh, footbridge up here. That is definitely 
you know, custom built for the route. Um, does look pretty good. Looks pretty busy. I just loaded in a 4024 service. Uh, I think it's like 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's, you know, it's somewhat busy, but uh, the bread and butter of this area is down here. So there's two very, very mucho grande uh, marshalling yards. And uh, a neat little area right here is the OBB, what they call Techniche Service, which is the locomotive maintenance facility, um, which they have kind of placed here statically. I don't know if you can get in any of those. I would imagine you can. Uh, but this is where they work on these bad boys. Um, so this is very true to life, I guess you could say. You can see the, uh, the roundhouse over here as well and turntable and locomotives. Nice looking building there. And then, of course, the marshalling or freight yards, which are friggin' massive. So quite a bit of freight does go over the Zimmering. Um, you know, you'll... You'll see aggregate uh, tankers, you'll see a lot of uh, automobile, um, you know, car carrier type stuff, and it is pretty thick through here. I'm interested to see if a lot of this is going to carry over into playable services, because me like a defreight, me like a defreight a lot. Um, so that would be nice if it is. Um, just have a crossing here, and then it kind of splits off into this other marshalling yard down here, and you'll notice the car carriers. And that is because Porsche uh, actually has a facility here. So this facility, which is right here, I think it's about here in real life, is a, uh, a Porsche manufacturer. I don't know if they build the cars outright or they make parts for the cars, but then cars are then shipped on the, uh, the auto racks here. So that's kind of true to life as well, which is very neat. Um, you've got a lot of mixed freight. I mean, this is probably the... The biggest European freight yard in friggin' train sim world that I've seen. And there's, I mean, that looks nice. I mean, it's not Hamburg, obviously, but it, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. I hope you can do stuff with it. I would love to be able to do stuff with it. And then continuing this way where the sun is setting, obviously, is the west. So this over here is the main line, passing line, obviously. And then over here is the... What we call the ladder in the states it'll lead to the yard and it is just a straight shot down to uh down to the mountain pass and zimmering and whatnot but uh, i'm kind of digging the color man i'm not really digging the color on the hedgerows that looks like a bowl of a fruity cereal you know when the when the the milk kind of takes control of the <laughs> pebbles and everything kind of starts mashing together that's it's not a good look. Um, they would just be kind of dead. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't think hedges really change colors all that much. But some of the other stuff looks very good, though. But yeah, Vienna Neustadt, um, you know, pretty good sized area. It's definitely one of the areas where there's more uh, attention to detail, um, you know, as far as the map and the way the map looks itself. And then in between here and uh, headed back west, which I guess we can go over, um, is St. Uh, Egedin. Uh, there's another town, I think, called Neukirchen, uh, Ternitz, Potsack, and then Glogonitz. So we missed a couple of stops, um, but I don't think any of them are like some of the, the nicer ones anyway. So let's take a look at, uh, what you're going to get for scenarios, the timetable. I'm hoping there's some freight options, and then we're going to get all up in that Taurus and see what it sounds like. So that's the biggest thing, if I'm honest. That's kind of what sealed the deal in, in buying this and hopefully helping you decide if you want to purchase this route or not is the Taurus because it's a sexy beast. All right, so let's go in and see what the timetable is all about. Click to the trains, choose a route. Here's your thumbnail here. Uh, timetable, scenarios, training modules, of course. Uh, scenarios, Firewatch, Blizzard, Bus, Milkshake, Snowed In, I Need a Hero. Uh, ranging from easy to not easy, I guess. It is Train Some World, if you really care about the points and medals and things like that. Uh, we'll go back, though, and take a look at the timetable. So what you see here are the 4024, the 1116, the 103, uh, and the Vectron. So the 103 is kind of like a heritage type service um and what i am missing because i do not have it installed if you have the uh 
the class 47, uh, the British class 47. That will also sub in here as kind of a rail tour as well because they did use one that was complete with like LZB and PZB and things like that, see if I think. Uh, so this, that will sub in if you haven't installed the class 47. Uh, alas, I do not. Let's click on the Vectron though and see uh, what it has. So Vectron Express. So that's that. What's the difference between the two? Interesting. So this is all freight. So you can run the Vectron freight car train from Glaganish to Merchislog. Nice. So there's quite a bit of friggin' freight. Holy hell, man. Yeah, this is all freight. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, the 103 should have one or two services. One it is Merchislog to be on the noise set. Uh, back, we'll click on the 4024. So this is like your regional service. Uh, there should be quite a few of these. Um, empty depot moves, uh, quite a few of those versus actual runs. Um, looks like quite a bit of them just go from, uh, Vienna to, uh, Pyreback. Then we'll go back. And the bread and butter, of course, is the UBB 1116. So this substitutes in, uh, as it does in real life for freight and passenger trains. So what's neat about a lot of the, uh, the federal railway stuff within Austria is they can all kind of pair with one another because a lot of the freight trains they do have um you know stipulations and restrictions going over the past because you know they got to keep trains to a certain weight um you know certain length and things like that and they'll sometimes double or triple loco uh i know they used to have kind of what they call banker services what we call in the states a helper service which will uh you know be be based at the bottom of the pass uh in either area so with it, um, you know, you've got uh, quite a bit manifest intermodal tanker. Where's the passenger stuff? Uh, oh, here we go. So, yeah, they're all kind of peppered in here as well. Um, I don't really see anything that kind of looks like a, you know, like a like a local which kind of sucks. You, you you know, you did see cars kind of peppered all over the line as well. Rail cars, freight cars. Uh, so I don't know if anything like that uh, is in store here. Of course, you can do the free roam type stuff and do it yourself if you want. Uh, but this desperately, desperately needs rail jet, you know, and uh, and like the, 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 the city jet, you know, the weasel stuff. Um, gosh, it'd be very nice to have some of that. So that's, that's what you get. So you get the 4024 and the 1116 uh, without a doubt. And then the Vectron, if you have it, layers in the 103 as well. Uh, I think that's from the left Rhine map, the 103. And then, of course, like I said, the 47, which it is weird to think of. But if you have it, you can run that in there as well. So anyway, let's get to it. Let's go ahead and hop in the Taurus and see what we can see in here. All right then, guys. The Taurus, the new and improved, or so Dovetail says, OBB one 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 six, or basically the one eight two, if you want to think of it like that. So, the triple one six is what Austria calls their Taurus. Uh, it is part of the Eurosprinter family, built by Krauss, uh, Buffet, and Siemens. Now, the ES sixty four U was developed as a universal electric locomotive with a top speed of one hundred and forty mile an hour. The initial variant was operable on 15 kilovolt and 16.7 hertz AC power uh, used in Austria uh, as a class 1016. They took it further and made the 1116, uh, which is the U2 variant, which can also run via 25 kilovolt, 50 hertz AC power. And that's what these are. Um, sadly, as I kind of already know, you will not see... Let me get rid of these clouds. It's pretty dark there we go let there be light um, you will not see any Siemens or Taurus uh, branding around the locomotive itself sadly they do have the UBB uh, which looks pretty darn good the color itself looks pretty darn good um, I think when they had them built uh, they they went for a specific kind of Ferrari red and uh, it does kind of go with that. I have it set up here as a freight service. I don't remember. Uh, 
Hege Shalom to Vilak Sud. So, yeah, whatever the hell that is. Just, just some freight train with Phil in here. <laughs> but uh, we're just going to run this thing and uh, have a listen to it because it's... It's basically just the 182, you know, it's it's Dovetail Games. They're going to use what they already have and try to make something new out of it with very little effort. And I say that lovingly. Of course, they, uh, you know, they say they updated the sounds. They did update the cab. As you can see, it, it has less of the old school kind of uh, mechanical or pneumatic gauges. Uh, it has a screen. Got this bit right there, which is not in the 182. A couple other things. I don't believe this, uh, uh, ba -ba, what do they call the, the friggin' timetable thing? Uh, it sits there. I uh, got your radio over there. It, you know, by and large, though, it is the same. You can walk through the back compartment here. Uh, let's get rid of that. And then you've got your door within the corridor, which goes outside. Uh, let's see how now I kind of want to try PZB but I also want to you know just you know slap it and uh, get get the most out of the sound in the feel uh, if you know what I mean so what do we got back here so our uh, parking brakes go ahead and make sure that's released your headlight controls are here so they're currently set to neutral we're gonna put them in headlights this vehicle only and like I said, we'll worry about the PCB and all that later. We'll just drive it by hand presently. I'm just seeing what you can mess with here as far as the breakers. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Make sure any of these panels open. Second man seat. Open the window. Let's go ahead and pop a squat. Throw the key in. Oh, let's try that again. I do like that. That's pretty cool. The uh, the boot up sequence. All right, forward. Let's make sure uh, we got the compressor to automatic. Uh, traction motor fan or automatic. Let's turn those on and see if there's any change. Okay, it doesn't seem to actually change anything. Make sure the pantographs are up, which they are. Close the circuit breaker. We do have a train line. We don't need lights, uh, or train lights anyway, because we're not carrying uh, passengers. We will leave the markers uh, on normal. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Why, why don't we have lights? What am I missing here? Maybe that does have to be on. Well, that's weird. They came on uh, a moment ago. Headlights, markers. Oh, here it is. Exterior light master switch. There we go. Let there be light. And they do look good. They have kind of that yellow tinge to them. Although, to be fair, a lot of the uh, Federal Railway uh, headlights and a lot of their rolling stock is this just crazy kind of bright white bluish color, which is very uh, specific to, um, you know, the UBB and a lot of their engines. Uh, let's see, reading lights. Turn those on. What's this? Instrument light. I guess that's up as much as possible. There's our uh, train brake and electric brake, direct brake. That's just your locomotive brake, of course. Horn. Now, is that new? It sounds okay. Um, that might have been on the 182 as well. It still has that, you know, just kind of flimsy synthesizer-y sound. Um, and not wholly organic. Anyway, enough. Blabbing. I think we can go. So we start off on a 0.6 grade. Um, let's go ahead and peel the brakes off. Ho! 4024, you just about can't see the damn screen. Yeah, we can mess with any of this stuff. Oh! Oh, so you can change uh, power sources. Oh! 
That was a nice little sound, the uh, brake release, the squeal. All right, this thing's pretty heavy. Now let's just listen. That sounds pretty damn good. I'm impressed. That has the uh, the actual musical note that these things are famous for, the singing trains. That sounds pretty good. It sounds a far cry better than the original sound from the 182. Um, I feel like the, sa the, the sounds of the fans are still a bit thin, though. Um, they just don't have that, that rushing air sound. It's just kind of... I don't know, it just sounds not all there, like halfway there almost. Um, we are currently speeding, of course. It did take a moment to get going, which is nice, so it did feel uh, somewhat girthy. I forget how you take a look at the... Uh, here we go, 1,349 ton. So I think that's right at the mark. I think most trains that can traverse the path pass path pass are like 1400 or 1500 ton depending on the locomotive that's going to pull or how many locomotives uh so on and so forth but yeah let's just sit here and listen to this thing run and hopefully nothing crazy befalls us we do have a uh a light there as well That sounds really good you know and of course I'm comparing it to how how these you know torses sounded before this update Got some appropriate signage up there, very nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a 182 with a slightly different dash, uh, coat of paint, and some new sounds. Um, you know, do I think that's worth a $40 price tag? Probably not. Now, this, the Simmering Bond, which came with the exact same locomotive and BMZ coaches and trained some classic, was always really cheap even to this day it's like 1999 i think i think it might have initially been 24.99 uh mind you it only went from Merchislog to glockenitz i think um but you know i don't know if updating a cab and tinkering with the sounds and how the sounds should have been from the get-go uh and you know of course extending the route 10 miles would warrant the price tag because you know, that's one of the big issues a lot of the time with uh, Train Sim World stuff is it's just a lot of rehashed content. We rarely get uh, new train sets. And then when we do, they're kind of half-assed. Like, I was really looking forward to the 4024 on Vorarlberg, uh, but the sound set in that just totally let it down. I mean, shiny, pretty things are fine and all but when it comes to any kind of simulator whether you be into you know trucks buses trains planes whatever when are sounds not a big deal they are always a big deal that was a rhetorical question um so you know they really need to work on that stuff there's you know the the, the time for excuses that they've used in the past um what you know let's let's not use those excuses anymore let's let's 
let's try and get more up to par with uh, with sounds. All right, let's see if we can turn the LCB on. All right, jeez, you cannot see. Main screen, that's what I want. Let's see, status. Trying to see function. Yeah, I'm probably messing something up here. I'm going to need my translator out to uh, be able to see any of this. All right, so we got the power off. Um, put it back forwards. We will set the... Oh! Let's, um, let's get our PZB on. That's in the hallway, isn't it? I believe it is. Should be one of these, yeah? Sifa. Definitely leaving that shit off. Mina like a Sifa. Alright, LZB. PZB normal. LZB normal. That's it. Close the dough. Let's see if I can do this right. All right, so power throttle is down. Let's, um, where's the, I don't remember the friggin' key command. Uh, <laughs> I know you, I'm pretty sure you gotta hit a button. Yeah. PZB mode is already set to heavy freight. Let's see, so that's the throttle. Let's set that. Man, I don't know if this is, uh... Hold on a minute. Where's the... Control guide? I swear there's a button, you know, how you turn it off and on. Uh, brake, circuit breaker, coach. Where's LCP? Jeep? The hell? Jeep? Why is there a Jeep? Um... Yeah, it's the LCP. Because the little bug, um, there should be a little bug on the on the dash there, and I'm not seeing it. LCP override? No, we don't want we we want we want it underwrite. Right. There's the LZB. Jeez Louise. Alright. Close the main circuit breaker to draw power. Why did we lose power? I'm sorry, what? How did we lose power? I didn't have anything on. All right, are we gravy? It's closed. No, that is a, uh, that's a restart. All right, we're gonna try it again in a passenger train. So we are now set up in a passenger train. First things first, let's go back and unisolate LCB and PZB. I believe that's all we need to do back there. I know some locomotives, like I said, uh, have different things to do. We are in cab one now though, so maybe things will change while we're back here. Let's go ahead and release the parking brake, signal lights, and let us open the doors. Uh, first we need the key, there we go. Now, I think the AFB does have to be, um, or the reverser has to be forward before you activate it, and the switch is down here. So it's right above the phone, like the 182. AFB. 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 All right, and she's saying AFB. Now, let's double check we're good power wise. So, Panagraph should already be up. I can already hear it running. Close the main circuit breaker. Train line is on, forward. There we go. Da da da. Brakes, headlights, exterior master switch, reading lights. 
All right, let's see if this works. We have got 30 seconds. All right, it's time to depart. Let's go ahead and close those doors. Now, I can see that the speed bug is now there. So I guess what... I feel like I did the very same thing in the freight train. You just got to make sure the key is in. It's in forward. You've got power. Uh, and then you can turn it on with, I think it was Control R or Shift R. But you can see a little pink dot there, which is our, uh, I'm going to call it cruise control or the AFB speed bug. So we'll go ahead and set it to 120, which I don't think we're going to get clearance for that quite yet. Go ahead and come off the brake. Brake line being a smaller train, charge is much, much faster. Let's give her some juice. All right, it's 45. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Let's see if it holds us full power. And there it is. Yep, I can see the little speed bug on there, which is now 45 kmh. Very nice. So it should cruise at that, even with max power. Get the winders up. And there are shortcuts that you can use uh, for the little AFB uh, speed bug. I'm going to press stuff until it works. Say R. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, shit. Pardon the language. <laughs> That's a big oh, shit. All right, so I accidentally turned it off, so R goes up. So what the hell is down? All right, so let's see. I'm going to reset it, or try to, anyway. So see, now it's not on. That is so confusing. Throttle is off. I think we have to be stopped. Maybe that's it. Although that wouldn't quite make sense, would it? All right, so we're still forwards. Ah, so you do. Now it's on. Okay, so. God. Oh, it's F and R. Jesus. Okay. There we go. Alright, so we should be able to go full speed now. Just want to double check that this works. And there we go, 150 kmh, I believe. So let's crank that bad boy all the way up. So it's R and F. Yeah, it's hard to remember all this crap. But, uh, you know... In hindsight, to try to kind of summarize everything after this painful experience on getting something as simple as the AFB to work, um, the update for this is nice. It does sound a whole lot better. Um, it, you know, it still kind of has that synthesizer-y sound and doesn't quite sound realistic. Um, you know, but then again, there was an attempt and it does sound better. So, you know, commending where commending is due. That is commendable, for sure. Now, if we could get the, the talent or the 4024 sounding appropriate, that would be very nice. Um, but overall, it's not a bad route. Like I said, it's kind of one of those one-trick ponies where you're going to go up and over the paths once or twice, and you'll 
you know, you might get bored of it. The only thing you really have to go for is the mastery to try and get the old multiple unit uh, sitting at Zimmering. Um, other than that, you know, with, with the lack of trains that we have right now, um, kind of sucks. We need a railjet. You know, the railjets look amazing, especially with the cab car. or multiple variations of said railjet. Um, you know, the inner city's nice, but it, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, the railjet is the most prominent around here. Lots of freight as well. I would like to see some weasels or city jets or, uh, you know, 5022s, 1144s, the, the older uh, federal railway locomotives, which, you know, look very cool. That kind of red and white uh, look with the, the kind of like the ribbed sides. Um, you know, those look very nice. It, it, it was fun operating those and trains of classic. We just need something a bit different because uh, it makes it kind of bland it's just more recycled content while you know a lot of the scenery and geography does look really nice it still just kind of feels like uh, you know every other route with the ingredients slightly changed you know with uh, with a lot of it you know one of the big glaring things again for me in my eyes anyway is this ballast the road the road bed that that kind of stripey texturing color just looks bad there's got to be a way to have that one uniform color i mean that would look so 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 much better uh the overhead line equipment looks okay um you know it's 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 a nice enough route but it looks to me just you know you, you could plot me down in this scenario this instance right now and i would think this is just some german route that that's been out since trains in world 2 if i'm honest um but you know Alas, it's it's the Zimmering Bond. Uh, you've got a lot of freight. You've got the regional. You've got this stuff. We just we just need the railjet. I think the railjet would would you know put a cherry on top, so to speak. Uh, and there's no branding, which sucks as far as like the Siemens and the Taurus type stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean it's okay. I don't think it's okay for forty bucks, brand new, uh, unless you're really into Austrian stuff. Um, even then, I'd probably still wait for a sale because a couple of months will go by and this will be, you know, 10 bucks off at least. And then, you know, wait a year, it'll be half off. Probably probably before that. But uh, I do always enjoy the uh, the European stuff and the uh, the German stuff within Trains and World 4. Anytime I fire this up, like I said, I've had it on the stall for quite a while, is going to be for uh, some, some German and now Austrian stuff, which is nice. We just need some sounds for the 4024. That would be very nice. But that is it, guys. Zimmering Bond, $40 for Train Sim World 4, uh, Merchenschlag to Vienna Neustadt. That's it. Hope you found the video informative and not too comical, like the, uh, the, the poor train and systems handling just a few moments ago. But that's it. See you next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.